Uh, Mike Pence had a town hall on CNN. This is, of course, a day after he announced his run for president in 2024, challenging his former boss, Donald Trump. And as I noted yesterday, uh, going to be an unsuccessful race, unfortunately, as the Republican Party currently stands, even though I wouldn't want Mike Pence to be president either. It's still an unfortunate fact that Trump owns it in the way that he does, and so most likely he's going to run over all of these candidates. But still interesting, Chris Christie, we talked about yesterday, is the most aggressively criticizing Trump, which is great to see. Mike Pence is actually more aggressively criticizing him than I guess I would have expected, but still his normal dishonesty surrounding multiple subjects, including Trump himself. And I'll show you what I mean, starting uh, with this clip where... In a recent interview with Fox News, he said he will support whoever the nominee is. And so, of course, CNN's going to ask, after everything that you have been saying, and we'll get to in the next segment in today's show, an ad he dropped in calling out Trump correctly for being so in the wrong on January 6th, threatening Mike Pence's life, etc. But you're saying still if Trump's the nominee, which he's most likely to be, uh, you will support him after you say he's violated the constitution as he did and his obligation to it and this was mike pence's uh, answer here but as soon as i heard the voice and ideals of the 40th president of the united states i joined the reagan revolution and never looked back and i've always supported the republican nominee for president of the united states and i'll support the republican nominee in 2024 especially if it's me well to follow up on this because you also say and i've heard you say this for years i'm a christian i'm a conservative and a republican in that order you just spent a lot of time both here and earlier today explaining why you think that the former president uh, did not uphold his oath to the constitution so then how can you say that you would support him if he's the nominee well, because I don't think Donald Trump's going to be the nominee well, what if he in the is? Republican Party. I, I don't think he's going to be the nominee. What if he is? I have great confidence in Republican primary voters. Uh, we, have a, we have a field of strong and experienced candidates that uh, grew by one today. And I truly do believe that people here in Iowa are going to recognize the challenges that we're facing and understand. Okay. That That's not an answer. If you are talking about the hypothetical of supporting a nominee that is not yourself and you're saying you will support whoever the GOP nominee is, a response can't be, well, I don't think Trump will be the nominee and that's why it's okay for me to support whoever the nominee is, um, even if it's him, which was the question, but I'm saying that he's not going to be. It makes no sense because, number one, he is most likely as of now to be the nominee by large margins in the polling. Um, And number two, you can't criticize you can but you can't be principled uh, principled and logically consistent in doing so criticize as correctly as many have what trump did on january 6th his attempted coup his uh, calls on pence to himself violate his oath to the constitution and again follow through with an attempt to keep trump in office even though he lost an election you can't call that out which is the worst thing a president um in his oath to the constitution could do to try to throw out the democratic process that he's supposed to be serving within and then turn around and say but i guess yeah if he gets nominated i'll support him there's something above partisanship and i think in a democracy it should be the democracy there's something above policy positions and it's the position all elected leaders should have within that democratic process of protecting that democratic process and that's what trump um didn't do and that's what mike pence in a sense isn't doing by not clearly saying i would support everyone except anyone who's attempted a coup and threatened my life when attempting that coup and then Another just really dishonest and logically inconsistent and confused and incoherent moment here from Mike Pence during the CNN town hall where he gets asked about the possible Trump indictment and he's against Trump being held accountable under the law, but he also insists he's not for anyone being above the law except Trump, but he doesn't word it that way. Take a look at this. I think now more than ever, we ought to be finding ways we could actually come and together. Sir, I, we're going to get and to this all kind of, of this kind of action by the Department of Justice, I think, would only fuel uh, further division in the country. And let me also say, I, I think it would also send a terrible message to the wider world. I mean, we're the we're the emblem of democracy. We're the symbol of justice in the world. And the 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 serious matter, which has already happened once in New York, 
I'm indicting a former president of the United States, sends a terrible message to the world. I hope the DOJ thinks better of it and resolves these issues without an indictment. Sir, I just want to clarify, what you're saying is that if they believe he committed a crime, they should not go forward with an indictment? You just talked before about no, look, committing to the rule of law. Let me be clear that no one's above the law. Okay. But with regard... <laughs> That's the best. No one's above the law. But... <laughs> to the unique circumstances here. It, it, look, I, I, those classified, I had no business having classified documents in my residence, and I took full responsibility for it. President Biden had no business having them in his residence from when he was vice president as well. And the same with former President Trump. But I, I would just hope that uh, there would be a way for them to move forward without the dramatic and drastic and divisive step of indicting a former president of the United States. We've got to find a way to move our country forward. What is that? I don't get it. And by the way, his whole vibe, I didn't really pay attention that much to Mike Pence during the Trump administration because of how present and constantly terrifying the actions of Trump uh, were. So Mike Pence kind of faded into the background. But now that I'm getting a chance to really see him as an individual political figure, I'm not liking what I'm seeing um, at all. Even just surface level kind of personality. Everyone calls him out for being boring, milk toast. Um, to me, it's also just this, this artificial made in a lab politician vibe too. You know, Dana, you're asking me to stick to my principle of rule of law and law and order. Uh, that's not something I can do. I believe in liberty. I believe in law and order. I believe in freedom. Thank you. Okay, uh, that's what I get off of Mike Pence. It's that you throw a jumble of talking points into a machine and have it spit out whatever it uh, wants to. And on that specifically, no, you can't say no one's above the law. And then go on to say, but if it's a former president, oh, that sends a bad message. It does. You know what sends a bad message? A former president possibly violating the law in keeping classified material that he wasn't supposed to have. And then when he knew he had them and he knew federal authorities were asking for it, he did not turn it over. He, it seemed, obstructed the investigation to keep the documents. And that's the crucial difference between Mike Pence's documents, Biden's documents, immediately turned them over voluntarily, and Trump's where he knew what he had and he tried to keep them away from federal authorities, moving boxes around, lying to federal authorities through his lawyers, all of this Allegedly, it seems to have happened. Um, and that's what he would be held accountable for. I agree with Mike Pence that it sends a bad message to the rest of the world that Trump did those things, but it sends an even worse message for him not to be held accountable for those actions. Uh, then this is priceless. Credit to Dana Bash. She asks him a question and within the question inserts some facts about mass shooters. Specifically, Mike Pence is saying he wants to increase the punishment, make it easier um, to to enact the death penalty on mass shooters, um, school shooters. And within that context, Dana Bash is saying, yeah, but a lot of these mass shooters wouldn't really care about being uh, subjected to the death penalty because they are assuming they're going to go in there and die afterwards. A lot of them are homicidal and suicidal as well. And so adding that penalty actually won't deter some of these shooters, and Mike Pence's response is deeply and profoundly incoherent. I'm going to quickly go back to something you said about uh, expediting uh, the processing right. of people who uh, engage in mass shootings. A lot of people who are mass shooters, they go in with the intention to die. So how would the threat of execution be a deterrent? Well, I, I follow these stories just as closely as you do. Apparently not. And of course, our years in the White House, we saw one tragedy after another. And, and I know we hear that, and we, we see evidence oftentimes in the aftermath that they went in without regard to whether they would survive. But I, I just believe in the deterrent of the law. And I believe perhaps if, if we made it clear, I mean, think about this. The Parkland shooter is going to spend the rest of his life in jail. 
in Florida. And that's not justice. You don't. So that's what that's called is not answering the question or answering it in a way that shows you either don't understand what you're talking about or you're not honest enough to uh, speak about these issues correctly. Because there, what does he say when Dana Bash points out actually deterring someone from doing something doesn't actually work when it comes to situations where they are planning on dying before the deterrence, uh, the action of deterrence would even be able to take place. And the response is, yeah, but I believe in deterrence. Okay, cool. So nothing. And this is the unfortunate reality we have within the Republican primary an extremely, extremely dangerous candidate, Donald Trump. And it's not like outside of Chris Christie, it's not like the alternatives are great. Not that Chris Christie is someone I would support uh, if there was a Democratic option, but he at least has some level of honesty, some level of principle. The rest of them aren't as dangerous as Trump, but they also in their own right are dishonest and would be bad leaders. And it shows you how far the GOP has, has fallen. Um, very unfortunate.